Hey guys, welcome to Franklin Woodworks. This is the jig I used to glue together all those little segments into rings. This is the jig I used to glue those rings together. And today, I'm going to combine both of these jigs into one simple jig, and I'm going to show you how I do it. If you've been turning segmented pieces for a while, chances are you figured out a way to glue those segments together. Personally, I've tried strap clamps and hose clamps, but I found that setting up the clamps is very time consuming, especially when you have to string two or more hose clamps together. Once the clamp is set up, then clamping is a breeze, but the method I use, using simple rubber bands, is a real time saver. The two main things to consider when building your own jig is that it has to remain flat and it doesn't need to be any larger than your lathe can accommodate. Since my lathe has a maximum turning diameter of 12 and a half inches, I'm making my jig 13 and a half inches square. First, I'm cutting three pieces of three quarter inch plywood to around 14 inches square, so I can true it up later after gluing the plywood together. I'm gluing the plywood together so it will remain flat for a long time. After I get the pieces cut to the initial dimension, I clamp them together and pre-drill holes for screws in opposite corners. This is so the glue up is very easy. Now I just spread some glue, put in the alignment screws, and clamp this thing to death. Once the glue is dry and I've taken off the clamps, I run it through the table saw again to square it up and bring it to the final dimension. Then I find the center so I can draw slices, just like slicing a pizza. I make sure the lines are nice and dark because I don't want them to go anywhere. Next I need to draw rings in one inch increments. Since I don't have a compass large enough for the job, I drilled holes in a thin piece of wood to accomplish the same thing. These rings will be alignment guides for gluing segmented rings to each other, and the intersections created by the rings and the slices will be for drilling that we'll get to in a little bit. But once everything is drawn, I give the surface a couple of coats of lacquer to lock those lines in place. Now it's time to start drilling. I use a 3 8 Forstner bit to get really clean holes. I've also got the depth guide on the drill press set so each hole is the correct depth without any guessing. Using a drill press is important for this step because the holes need to be perpendicular for reasons that will become apparent later. I'm drilling almost all of the intersecting points of my lines but not all the way to the center. This is for two reasons. First, my drill press doesn't have enough swing to reach the center. And second, even if it did, I don't think I'll be gluing segments together for a ring that small. I'll just use solid wood for sections like that. Now that that is finished, I flip the jig over and find the center on the back. This is for a countersink for a carriage bolt that will go in the center of the jig. I use one of the largest Forstner bits I have to create the countersink. Since it's oversized, it's not important to use a drill press for this step, and I couldn't anyway since my drill press isn't big enough. But now I have to drill the hole through the center for the half inch carriage bolt. Since this hole needs to be perpendicular and I can't use my drill press to do it, I use the drill press to make a simple jig out of two blocks of wood that will help me keep my handheld drill plumb. So how does this thing work? Well, after you've cut your segments, put eight dowels in a ring just larger than the ring your segments will create. Put an appropriate sized rubber band around the dowels. In this case, I used a doubled up office type rubber band. There is every size of rubber band out there, and I've found that a doubled up rubber band works best in terms of tension. Once you've applied glue to the segments, simply begin to release the rubber band from opposite dowels, gradually applying pressure to the ring. 
Things may seem a little awkward in this demonstration, but once you have glue on the segments, things stay together like they should. And if your segments are perfect, the pressure will draw them into a perfect circle. And I almost forgot, to keep glue from getting on the jig, I put a piece of wax paper over the jig before I insert the dowels. With the segments glued into rings, now you need to glue the rings together. Some folks do that on the lathe and use a tailstock to clamp them together. Sometimes that is appropriate, but I've found it difficult to keep everything perfectly centered and in the correct rotational position as you move the tailstock into place. This jig solves that. Just insert the appropriate length carriage bolt through the center, use the alignment rings to center the rings in the orientation of choice, and use another piece of plywood cut to size, a washer, and a wing nut to clamp the rings together. You can use scraps to make these clamping pieces in many different sizes to suit your needs. This jig has really increased my success rate when it comes to segmented turning. I apologize if the video didn't answer all the questions you may have in your head, but that gives you a perfect opportunity to leave a question in the comments. I'd love for you to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Hope this gives you some good ideas for your shop. Thanks for watching, and there you go.